Hello everybody, this is Janelle Cooper. Welcome to Tuesday Techniques. Today we're gonna play with Tunisian crochet. I'm super excited about this actually. I haven't done it myself for quite some time. So I pulled out a couple of um, old things that I did um, just to kind of show you what it looks like. I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time talking about like, you know, the hooks and all that kind of stuff, but I did wanna show you just a couple of different um, hooks that are used for Tunisian crochet. It's basically, a um, sort of a hybrid between crocheting and knitting. So it's so fun to do, it's really fun. And it gives you this really thick fabric. Um, so it's really nice for, for me, I use it for um, dishcloths and I use it for kitchen cloths, um, which is a great way to practice your stitches, which is what we're gonna do today because I'm gonna show you a couple different stitches. Um, so the Tunisian crochet hooks are a little bit longer and they have a, a stopper on them because um, you're actually gonna keep all of your stitches on here and then you're gonna work them off and then you're gonna work them on and then you're gonna work them off. And there's no like flipping or anything. You stay on the same side the whole time, which is a little bit, it's like knitting basically, except we're doing it with a crochet hook, just one hook instead of two needles. Um, you'll also see them that look like this, that have these really long things on them. The reason for that is that um, Tunisian is actually used often for making afghans. So you need something that you're going to be able to make a very large piece of fabric on. So you, um, I actually got this set last year for myself, I think for Christmas, or actually it was the year before for Christmas, and it came in this cute little purple bag and um, it had all these different size hooks, but honestly I've only really used, I believe the 6.5, <laughs> um, so because that's kind of just the hook of choice. So. Um, you do want to go up a level on your, or go up um, a size on your hooks, a couple of sizes actually. So when you're using, for this we're going to be, um, we're gonna be practicing making dishcloths, or I call them kitchen cloths because they're, they're a towel slash dishcloth slash pot holder, whatever you want them to be, right? Um, so we just, we actually use these in my house more than we use, um, any kind of like towels or anything in our kitchen. This is just kind of our go-to thing that we use. So I, I like to make them for like every season and every holiday. So these are much loved. They're a couple years old. This is one from ha for Halloween. This one I made for summer. I wouldn't recommend whites because they get dirty and they don't get super clean. But um, I love to do whites on everything. But anyway, so I brought out some Christmas colors today because we're close to Christmas and I thought um, I only have one Christmas um, kitchen cloth, so I thought it'd be fun to make some more. Um, you definitely want to, on these, they, I believe they say to use an H hook on these which is a size, yeah, H, which is a um, five millimeter. I'm gonna go up to a six millimeter. So that's two sizes up. And the reason for that is these stitches are tight, just like knitting. So you want them to stay loose, otherwise they're gonna curl on you. So that's one way to keep, um, Tunisian crochet is well known for its curling aspect. It tends to just kind of curl up on the edges. So I'm gonna teach you two different ways to counteract that. One of them is actually, I'm gonna teach you three different ways. One of them is to go up a few sizes in your hook to keep it nice and uh, loose so that it lays flat. The other one is I'm gonna counteract it with this reverse stitch. And also you can actually crochet just a regular single crochet around the outside. So um, if you're already started working on those things, then um, these will be great ways. You'll see that almost all of my kitchen cloths start off with the reverse basic stitch, the, um, basically the reverse of the simple stitch. Um, and we're gonna actually start with that instead of teaching the simple stitch, which is what everybody teaches first, um, because it's just the simple stitch only from behind. So I'm gonna teach you that first, and then we're gonna go ahead and just get right into it. So you know how chatty I am. I'm sure I'll give you lots of information as we go. One thing to keep in mind is for some reason with Tunisian crochet, especially when you're using cotton, is it tends to shrink when you wash it. So keep that in mind. I'm actually gonna make my cloth slightly bigger than these ones. These have been washed many, many, many times um, and they have shrunk down. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger. First thing you wanna do is you just wanna go ahead and chain like normal. So, and I'm just gonna keep your chains nice and loose. Just chain for um, basically the width that I'm gonna do on here. I'll tell you how many it turns out to be. Okay guys, so I decided that I'm gonna make this about nine inches wide, um, knowing that it's probably gonna shrink down. And then you've got your chain. For me, that was 25. So, um, got all twisted. So the difference between this next row and what you would normally 
do in crocheting is usually when we go back, you would skip this one, which we're still gonna do, and then you would go into the top of this, right, to do your single crochet, to go ahead and get started on the next row. We are actually gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna turn it and see in the back of, there's three, there's always three pieces of yarn that make up a chain, right? Um, the one that we want, so there's the bottom two and the top one. The one that we want is if you turn it to the back, there's this bump back here. That's the one we're gonna use. And we are gonna go through that, go through it, wrap and pull up a loop and leave it on the hook. Don't do anything else with it. Go to the next one. And of course, when you're trying to go into the chain, it's always gonna make things a little bit awkward because you're basically establishing your foundation row, but um, that will get better with time. See how loose that is right there? I'm gonna redo that real quick because you don't really want that to be loose. Okay. It's been a while since I've done this. It's funny how it all comes back though. Okay, so then we're gonna go into each one of these little loops right here. until you get all the way across that row. Hopefully you can see that. And what that does is it leaves a nice little chain on the bottom. So, it's, so if you're looking at the bottom, you see the chain there? It's the back bump that you wanna go through right there. Okay, so now here's where the fun part comes in. So you have established your first row. What we're gonna do now is once you get them all on there, then we work them off. And we do that over and over. We build them on, we work them off. We build them on, we work them off. We never flip it or any of that. Um, so that's what kind of makes it feel like knitting. So the first one, this is our row that we're just gonna work the stitches off of the hook. You're actually going to, let's get this in the right spot. Um, you're gonna go up, wrap it once, and you're gonna go through the first one just one through there. That establishes the chain that's gonna build the wall that goes up. So just like in crocheting, you usually chain one to go up, right? Um, especially if you're doing like a single crochet or something small. This is the chain one. Then you're gonna wrap it and you're gonna go through two. Right? And then you're gonna do it again all the way across. Two, 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 all the way across. This sort of rhythmic, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but this is very um, soothing to do once you get the hang of it, which clearly I don't because it's been a long time since I've done it. But um, once you get a rhythm going, it is just very soothing to just like wrap them on, pull them off, wrap them on, pull them off. Okay, last one. Okay. So now that this row, the first row has been established, this is usually when people go in and start teaching you how to do the simple stitch, which we are going to get to. But before we teach you the simple stitch, I'm gonna teach you how to do the reverse stitch, which is basically the simple stitch, for, but from behind. So now what we're gonna do, and the reason we're doing that is if we establish the reverse stitch on the bottom, it will keep the whole piece from curling. It keeps it nice and straight. Um, so it's just a kind of a good habit to get into. So I'm gonna go ahead and, so usually what you do at this point, this, by the way, this counts as the first stitch on there. So you never go into this first one. This continues that on. You're gonna go into the next one right here. So if you're doing a simple stitch, all you're gonna do is go into this, see this like post right there? You're gonna go into the front part of that stitch and then you're going to wrap it and pull it up and do that all the way across. That's a simple stitch. But a reverse stitch is the same thing, only instead we're gonna go behind and we're gonna take its twin. So each one of these stitches has two pieces of yarn, one in the front and one in the back. We're gonna do the one in the back. Hopefully you can see that. So here's the, here's the front, here's the back, you're gonna do, it's like a little horseshoe right there. See how it loops over? You're gonna do the one from the back. 
the first one's going to be awkward. Make a loop, pull it up, and then just do that all the way across. And again, this you get a rhythm. So what I like to do is I like to go all the way through and then just slide into that back loop. It just makes it go faster for me. It's just easier. And I know I'm getting the right loop when I do it instead of accidentally getting that front one. And so what this is doing is it's actually pushing the stitch, instead of going straight up, it's pushing it forward. So that's what gives it sort of this, it almost looks like a purl stitch. Um, actually, there is a purl stitch in Tunisian crochet and it looks a lot like that, but it also looks like a purl stitch in knitting too. So it's like the, the opposite, um, the backside, if you will. And it makes it kind of this cool nubby um, sort of fabric and it's a great way to sort of break things up so like here I have reversed the reverse stitch this is basic this is the knit stitch that's the simple sorry I call it basic but it's the simple stitch and then that's the reverse simple um, I think that that might be pearl oh no that's probably simple simple reverse so if you break it up like that, it kind of, it gives it a cool texture, but it also keeps it from curling too. So I'm gonna continue to just do this all the way across. Make sure I got the right one, yeah. And then I'll meet you at the end when we have them all set up on there. Because, oh, don't do the last stitch because there's a special way you do the last stitch. Okay, so I have all of the um, stitches on my hook. Now I'm down to the last one. And on the last one, you don't go through the back. You actually go through it just like it's the chain, right? So you find the chain, which is those two right there, and you go through both of those, wrap it, and pull through just like that because we're creating a chain on the side, really on both sides. So they'll, um, it'll be a nice straight edge. So then once you do that, just like before, you're gonna wrap it and you're gonna pull off one, that's the chain for the edge, and then you're gonna wrap it and go through two and take them all off the hook that way. So two, I don't know why, but this is super satisfying, <laughs> just taking them off the hook. That one's a little looser than I'd like it to be. I don't wanna go back though. So just make sure that this is tighter. Like for some reason, I always make mine really loose right there. So there you go, that's pulling it off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, the next row, we're gonna to continue to pull, push this forward. So I know it looks really funky right now, but as soon as I do that stitch, it's gonna push this forward and it's gonna match these ones down below. So we'll go, I'm gonna go ahead and do the reverse stitch for like another three or four more rows, just so you have a nice established base right there. And then I'll show you how to change stitch and also change color. So let's go ahead and practice this one one more time. We're gonna go, remember not to do that one. You're gonna go through here and grab this. I go up through here and then grab the back yarn. To me, that's easier than just trying to figure out which yarn to grab, but you can do it whichever way feels more comfortable for you. Okay. That was harder than I thought it was going to be. Okay. So the next one. So see how it's like you go through here, you grab the back yarn, wrap it and pull up. And see how it just automatically pushes the, the top of this row gets pushed forward. There are so many fun stitches to learn in this too. But today I think we're just going to cover maybe three. I might get fancy. told my son to be quiet while I was filming. He's not doing a very good job of that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna continue this till we get to the end. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, here we are. We've gotten to the end again. 
Isn't that just nice looking? It's just so like straight and pretty. Um, I'm going to find that chain on the side, the last chain, go through the, so the two are in the front and the one is in the back. And then we're just gonna pull wrap and then pull up. And then we're gonna make a new chain to go up the side right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and wrap and go through two all the way across and it'll pull these up. So I'm gonna continue doing this until I have like probably probably five rows and then I will show you how to we're gonna switch to probably simple stitch and we'll switch colors too you know there's like there's like three different ways to change colors I'm gonna show you the easy way well they're all easy but I'm gonna show you the simple way first which is just like blocks of color or stripes um, and then there's a way that you can combine them together um, which is fun if you're using two different color yarns, which maybe we'll do that with the green. And then um, and then um, there's actually the one that I'm probably not going to cover in this video, but there's a way that you can actually do blocks too. We'll maybe cover that in a new video. Okay, so I have finished my five rows, but only four of them are pushed forward. Um, but I have actually done the the stitch and the return on it. So that row's ready to go. But we're gonna change color. And the reason I'm gonna change color and do, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to continue to do in the back loop of these before we change to the um, simple stitch. And the reason we're gonna do that is I'm gonna show you an example. So in this one, I didn't do that. I actually did, I didn't change colors um, until after I finished the stitch. And then you end up getting part of your simple stitch in that color. If you want it to be a nice clean break like this where you change from this stitch to this stitch, and it's like there's definitely a change there, then we have to actually do part of the stitch with the new color, um, the part that's not gonna show, basically. So um, so you always want to, on this one at least, on the reverse stitch, um, you wanna start off. And if you're going to do it, there's, there's different ways that you can change color. You can actually do it so that you're working with two colors at the same time and go back and forth, which is super fun. Um, but in this one, we're just gonna do solid stripes like this. So if you wanna do a solid stripe, you wanna start on the right with the, the new color and then, and then work it off and then start and then work it off. So what we're gonna do is just like in regular crochet, you get to the point where you just have like the last two yarns on the hook and then you grab your new color and then you just pull this through like this. Then, you want to pull these tight so that they're not like super loose there because they will be loose if you don't. You want to get this little guy out of the way and you want to take this one here. Sorry, I kind of did that wrong. You want to take this one here and you actually want to, your old color should actually go over the top of your new color. So the new color is like that. And if you, because if you don't do that, then what ends up happening is you end up with, um, it ends up with like a hole right there. So you, and you don't want that to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and use this new color. This is gonna be pulled off. So take the old color and pull it off to the side. And then you're gonna go into your back loop. Sorry, as I struggle. Go into your back loop, pull the new, um, new color up this way. like that, and then the new color will be on there for this row. Think of the, when you're going across, you're setting it up, right? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna push this row forward and give it a nice clean break when we switch to the next stitch. When you are doing this, you want to make sure that the yarn is over here. You don't want it to like accidentally end up over here because then you're you're trying to like wrap it too many times. So you want to make sure the yarn is pulled this way and then you go in and grab the back of your stitch and then you you don't even like wrap it. You just kind of like move it over the top of your hook and pull it up just like that. Because if it's over here and you try to do it, it's um doesn't work out and then you're like uh, okay that doesn't feel right so just always make sure that your yarn is on the back side when we're doing a purl stitch which is a different stitch then the yarn has to be up front and it'll make sense when you do that 
Okay, so we're down to the last one. We go over here to our chain, go through that chain right there, pull up a loop. Okay, and then I'm gonna work this off of here and then we'll start with the simple stitch. I've finished that. See what it did was it ended up pushing this row forward and then we've set up this row for a nice clean break into a new color. So one thing you could do if you wanted to right here, this is not something that I'm going to do at this time, but you could actually, I left this green here. You could leave that, drop this one and bring the green back up. If you're going to do that, it's called carrying it. You want to pull this over the top of the green, just like we did before. Sorry, that little tail's in the way. And then you can actually pull the green up and, and pull it back into the stitch and go right into whatever stitch you're doing. So you'd be switching back and forth between the colors and you could do that with every row if you wanted to. So it could be totally candy cane striped or whatever you wanna do. I'm not gonna do that on this one. I'm actually going to keep with this variegated yarn for a while. So one thing I will show you on this video at the end of the video, how to weave in your ends. I'm going to tell you that is the one thing about Tunisian that I don't like. Weaving in your ends in Tunisian stitch is not fun. It's just like weaving in your ends in knitting. Crochet is so much easier. <laughs> so, um, but Tunisian crochet, you, the weaving ends, because because you're basically working with a knitted back on it. So there is a way that, there are actually multiple ways that you can um, weave in your ends as you go. I have done that in the past and they've come out. So I, unfortunately, the tried and true method is the one that stays better, in my opinion. Um, you can, if you want to look at some of those other videos that teach you how to weave in your ends as you go, um, you could definitely do that. And I'm sure you could figure out a way to do it so that it doesn't come out. But every time I've done it, it's always had like a little piece sticking out here and there, and I'm always trimming it, and it's getting smaller and smaller. So I try to stick with the tried and true method, which I will show you at the end of this video. So we're gonna continue on with the variegated color and just leave those little tails there to weave in later. Um, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna do what's called the simple stitch. This is usually the first stitch you learn. And basically all you're gonna do, again, you're not gonna chain up on this side. It's already chaining up for you as you go. See those pretty chains there? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna skip this and you're gonna go into this one right here, just the front bar. And then you're gonna wrap and pull up just like that so easy. The simple stitch is like the easiest, but this is the one that notoriously curls the worst. So if you have the reverse stitch on the base, it keeps that curl from happening. You won't see it happen probably at all on this, but if you went straight into the simple stitch, it would definitely be curling on the ends right now, unless you were doing a big hook with the small yarn, because then that makes it nice and loose. So I'm going to work this all the way across just like that. It makes that cool little like almost looks like knit. Actually, it almost kind of looks like a what would you even call that? Like a you know those plastic bases that you can sew into? That's what it reminds me of. I know that there's a a technical term for those, but um, and actually a lot of people use the um, simple stitch as a base for cross stitching. So you can actually cross stitch cool things on here too. Just know as you're loading this on here, every stitch ends the same. So when you get to the end, you always wanna go into that chain right there. That's how you end every row. And then you take them off exactly the same no matter what stitch you're doing. Pretty sure, I haven't come across a stitch that you don't you don't take it off, work it off the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do like four or five rows of this and then we'll switch into another stitch. Okay, so I have finished five rows in the simple stitch. And I think instead of changing stitches, I'm gonna show you how to change yarn in a different way. So we're gonna actually work with two different colors and you can actually create sort of an ombre look with this. You can, because what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be changing, you're gonna keep this color, but then you're gonna work in other colors with it. It looks really cool, um, but it's definitely a different look than like a stripe. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, 
because we've done, look at how it's curling like that. That is typically what a simple stitch does. Don't worry about it. We're gonna put so many cool rows of this and other things in here that that'll just work itself out. And then also when we go along and we do our um, single crochet border around the outside, if you choose to do that, that'll also like make sure it's nice and straight too. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And the word I was looking for earlier was mesh. It looks like one of those plastic mesh things that you like learn to um, stitch on when you're little, or at least I did. <laughs> Anyway, my, my first yarn crafts. Um, anyway, so yes, it looks like you could easily cross stitch in here um, anything that you wanted to do. Also, I like to use um, the simple stitch as a um, background for like if you wanted to make an applique and then sew it on there because it's very easy to pick up those stitches and have them not show through on the back too. This is what the back looks like, by the way. It looks like the back of a knitted piece, really. So pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, instead of changing yarn on this side, so normally remember how I said that if we're gonna change the color and make it be like a nice clean break like that, you always wanna change on the right side. But in this case, we don't wanna do that. We're gonna actually um, continue on with this yarn. Um, make sure that's kind of tight. And then you're gonna go ahead and start with your simple stitch across. I think that this is the only one that, the only stitch that I can think of I mean, there are some honeycomb stitches and stuff that it might work on, but this is the one that um, it looks the coolest on when you do this technique, I think. Because um, it doesn't really show, when you do the knit stitch, it's not gonna show. On the reverse stitch, it doesn't really show. So it mostly shows really well on this one because you see that return, those return stitches going across. So you're just picking up these bars. Oops, I got two. This is fun to do with variegated yarn too, like to have a solid and a variegated because you can almost make an ombre sort of look by weaving in another, another color. Are you guys having fun with this so far? I think this is just so soothing because it's not hard. You don't have to think about it really. Once you've got the stitch figured out, it's just like loading it onto the hook and taking it off of the hook. Also, when you work with a variegated colored yarn like this, it makes it really easy to see those bars to grab. So last stitch, go into that chain, pull up a stitch, and instead of doing your chain and pulling up like you normally would, you're gonna pull in a new color. So the chain up is gonna be in your new color. So chain up one, just like that. And then you're gonna pull through two. And so your return is gonna be in the new color, but leave the old color dangling because you're gonna pick it up on your next time through and that'll be your return color. And it'll swap back and forth. We'll just do this for a couple rows and then we'll switch to a different color so you can see what it looks like. So, you set it up with the old color, but then you did your return with the new color. Now we're gonna set up the next row with the new color and do the return with the old color. So go ahead and just do like you normally would, pull up your loops through here. Okay, so in order to do this right, some of this I have to kind of remember. The, one of these tails should have made like a, the third um, yarn there, but it's not there now. So you actually want to go through that um, horseshoe hoop right there, even though you've only got one piece of yarn there. Pretend like this is the other one. And then that will continue the chain correctly. It'll look funny. It'll feel funny. But as long as this looks the same going up the side, then you're fine. So now what we're going to do is you're gonna chain up with the new color, or with the old color, actually, and switch. Now 
can do your return in the old color. Leave the new color sitting there and we'll pick it back up on the next row. So see what that did? It kind of like ombres in this background color, which looks kind of cool. I'm gonna do a couple more rows of this, of the mint, and then I think I'll switch to like a pink background color, and then we'll go back to this green, and then we'll redo this, and then we'll do a different, I think I'm gonna try, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the either the knit stitch or the purl stitch. We'll see what happens when we get there. Here we are at the end again. I just wanna show you again, just really quickly, um, this part right here, it's a little bit easier now that you don't have like so many tails hanging there. You can actually kind of see those two pieces of yarn. Um, you're gonna go ahead and Go ahead and put it through there just like you would before before so that you're creating this chain on the side and then i don't know if i did a really good job of showing you how we changed yarn last time so you want to pull this over the top of that yarn and then this is going to come up this way that's this is the other color and then you're going to just pull that through one so i changed my mind um, and here's why um, instead of doing five rows with the mint in it, I'm actually going to do four because um, if I want the pink to continue with the variegated, um, I have to do it now. <laughs> if I if I return the mint all the way back here and then go back with the mint, then the pink will be going through the mint. And although that would be super cute, it's not the look I'm going for. So I want to keep it in. Um, I want to keep the variegated going through um, this section of it. So I'm going to go ahead and change to the pink on this. We're going to leave the green behind for now so I'm just gonna trim him off and then bring our pink in this by the way is cotton I think I said that at the beginning but I may not have said why so um, because this is a dish you can do this with any yarn but because this is a dishcloth you want it to be absorbent and the only yarn that I know of that's super absorbent is cotton Okay, I'm struggling. Getting the center is not as easy as it used to be. I don't know if anyone else has come across that. You know what? I'm just gonna go from the outside because it's not worth it. Okay, so, so we're gonna, just like we did with the green, with the mint, we're gonna go ahead and pull this through We've already gone all the way across and we went through our little chain on the end. I'm gonna pull this through for the chain up. Make sure that's nice and tight. Leave your little strands there. That's it. Yes, it will be a nightmare lately. <laughs> Later, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Weaving in ends is not my favorite thing. I got really good at it in crocheting, like regular crocheting, and um, so it doesn't it doesn't um, upset me anymore, but definitely in Tunisian, it's not fun. <laughs> so. Um, and then we're just gonna work this off just like we would before, but now we're doing it with the pink and I'll get a chance to be able to show you the, the actual ombre look that comes from this yarn changing technique. One of the things I love about these sampler um, kitchen cloths, because you can just do whatever makes you happy. It doesn't even have to be symmetrical, although mine probably will because um, it's hard for me to do things that aren't symmetrical, <laughs> but it's, that's just a personality quirk. But, um, but you don't even have to do that. You can just do whatever stitches you want on here. It can just be five different stitches going on there if you want to. I'm only gonna focus on three, I think, today. Okay. So I've gotten to the end of my, I have four rows of green and four rows of pink, and I've decided to go back to green to kind of frame it in, because this actually is a cute little canvas. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little, like a little heart applique and sew that on right there. And then the rest of this is gonna be just, I think, knit stitch, maybe even in like, I don't know, I might do, candy stripes or something. It's kind of fun to just make it up as you go along. So, and then also you don't know what it's gonna look like until you get to the end. So uh, since I'm switching back to green, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this pink off, give it some space so that I can um, weave in those ends. Maybe I'll put that, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. So, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and frame this in and I'm gonna um, do the, this stitch right here and then this will be the front basically of the kitchen cloth. 
um, that kind of like hangs over the sink. And I'm gonna do like a cute little thing right here, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in just like we did before. But now that we're gonna do a solid color, I'm not gonna start it on this side. I'm gonna start it over here on this side. Just pull it in those last two hoops, pull that tight and then pull that over to the side. Actually, I think you want it to go over the top. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, we're not gonna go right into the back loops of these like we did with this, because that'll push these forward. We don't wanna push those forward. We wanna create a base of the green first and then push that forward. So I'm gonna start with regular simple stitch first. Whoops, if I can manage all these different threads at once. So just to make sure that's kind of nice and tight on the end, I'll pull that. I will, and we will straighten all these out when we get to the end of it and we're weaving in our ends. Like some over here, some of these are tighter because I pulled them tight, but I can loosen them up before I weave the ends in so that they're all uniform with each other. Okay, so just simple stitch across and then do your return and then we'll switch over back over to the reverse stitch or reverse simple stitch. I went all the way across. We're not switching colors anymore, so I went ahead and just cut this off and cut these. These guys are just dangling, waiting for me to sew them in later. And I'm just going to continue on with the return um, with the dark green. So we're going to go up one and over. Okay, so now that we're at the end of this row, I'm gonna pull this a little bit tighter, kind of make it even with these. Um, now that we have finished our color that we wanna push forward, now we can switch to the reverse stitch, or the, yeah, reverse stitch. So just like before, you're gonna kinda of hold this back out of the way, and then you're gonna go in, like we did before, from the back, and you're gonna, instead of taking that front stitch, you're gonna take the back loop of that stitch. and go like that. So like once again, forward, but you're gonna grab not this front one like we usually do, but the, the back piece of that yarn. Another way you could do it probably is to fold it over, but I just, for me, it's a lot easier to just go forward and then grab that back stitch. Back loop, it's just like back loop crocheting. See how it's already pushing it forward so it matches down here so i'm going to go ahead and do about five rows of that so that this matches this and then the rest of it i think i'm going to do in a knit stitch and um that'll and then we'll end it with this so um hang on meet me at the end of these five rows and then i'll show you how to do the knit stitch okay guys so here we are i've decided that i'm going to actually leave this bar not quite as thick as this one because it's just kind of a divider line. So I'm only gonna do four rows on this and we're gonna go ahead and change color. Just remember that you're when you change color and stitch at the same time, you always wanna change color before you actually change the stitch. So just like we did before, we're gonna go ahead and um, still do the same stitch across um, so that we're pushing this row forward but we're actually setting up for the next stitch, which is going to, we're gonna change this into a knit stitch. So, but we're gonna go ahead and do a regular through the back hoops, and then we're gonna go do our back pass, and then we'll start with our knit stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and change colors first. So what this is doing is we're still doing the, the stitch that we did before, we're just doing it with a different color. And what that does is it pushes this forward and starts the next stitch in the next color so that it's a nice clean break. So um, what we're gonna do for the knit stitch is we are going to actually, up to this point, so what we've done so far is we've worked with this front hoop, right? That's for when we're doing the simple stitch. And when we've been doing the reverse simple stitch, we're grabbing the back hoop. 
but this time we're actually going to go through the middle of both of them so see how there's the both hoops right there are the both parts of the yarn right there you're going to go right through the center and you're going to wrap and pull straight up right through the center wrap pull straight up so instead of coming to the front or going to the back you're actually going both sides now This part, this one feels so normal to me. This is like, I would think this is this would be the simple stitch, but it's not because it looks just like knitting. To me, this one goes really fast. And then you're, that's the last stitch. And then just like before, you're gonna go through the chain, which is basically the same thing as the knit stitch. You're just gonna do it over here. So you have those two pieces of yarn, pull it up. And then you're gonna pull up one for your chain up. And then you're going to do your return. So go through, wrap and go through two all the way across, just like you do for all the other stitches. I'm going to show you a couple rows of this so that you can actually see what that knit stitch looks like. So you can start to see kind of how that knit is starting to happen there. We're going to do another row. It'll start to look more and more like knitting um, after like the second and third row. So just continue on. To me, this is the easiest stitch or the one that feels the most natural. But you do want to make sure you pull those yarns up so that they don't get too tight. So just make sure you know where I'm going on this. There's the first one. There's the second one. You're going to go right through the middle of those two. There you go. See? Isn't that cool? I think the knit stitch is my favorite. It's just so pretty. And it makes a really, it's not like actual knitting because actual knitting is really thin. This is a really thick piece of fabric, which it works nicely when you're like grabbing hot pots and stuff with it. Okay. So I'm going to continue on. Just keep going with what you've learned. You can actually mix it up and do whatever you want and then make it as long as you want. I'm going to make it so it's about that long and then I'm so I'm going to end like right here and then I'm going to finish it with this to match on both sides and then I think I'm going to make a cute little heart applique to go right there so meet me at the end okay guys here we go I have nearly finished my kitchen cloth I have to fold it out because it won't fit on camera for you but um so this is the part I did off camera I just um I couldn't resist I had to change colors um so I did switch colors back and forth. There are a couple things that I can tell you from doing that for the first time in over a year. Um, when you, first of all, you can probably see that I also need practice because look at how perfect my left side is and how unperfect my right side is. And that's because I tend to crochet very loosely. So my edges are very loose. So you wanna make sure you keep those tight on the edge. It doesn't matter because we're gonna do a border and it's gonna cover all that up anyway, but um, just something to keep an eye on. The other thing too is that when I drop stitches, which I did, I had to go back a couple times to fix it. But when I drop stitches in crochet, it's usually on this side right? Because you can't see where the end of the row is, and that's why I use stitch markers. But for some reason in this, I always drop it on this side, and I think it is because this stitch is so much closer than you think it is. So keep an eye on that. Maybe when you change stitches, make sure that you count how many loops you have on here, um, just to make sure that you didn't miss a stitch, and then, you know, you should be able to continue on. It's very, it's pretty easy to see when you do skip a stitch or when you drop a stitch because you'll this beautiful row right here will suddenly like stop so that's how that happens i actually did drop a stitch somewhere back here 
but I didn't realize it till I was somewhere up here and decided not to go back. So I started off with 25 stitches. I ended up with 24. We're just gonna continue on. This is our practice cloth, right? So um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So there's um, a couple things that I have left that I wanna teach you. Um, notice that I've already woven in most of my ends. And when you change color that many times, there are a lot of ends to weave in. Weaving in ends in um, this is not my favorite thing to do, but I think I found a way to do it that's pretty quick, not as painful as I remember it being in the past. And so I'll share, I'll show that to you. It may not be the way to do it. So um, it's a lot like knitting when you're weaving in your ends and you're knitting. And so knitters out there will probably go, no, she's not doing it right. You're absolutely right. I'm probably not doing it right. But my goal when I'm weaving in ends is to make sure it doesn't come undone, make sure it's nice and secure, and make sure you can't see it. So I figure if I accomplish those three things, then I've done my job. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's not like the patented way to do it, but it's my way to do it and it works. So, um, so I'm gonna show you how to weave in ends. I'm gonna show you how to finish. And then um, I'm also gonna show you how, I'm gonna just do a border around the outside. And then I did something really fun. I made a cute little applique and I'm gonna show you how to um, sew your applique on. And the simple stitch is the my favorite place to sew on appliques because really that top stitch is so easy to just sew into and it doesn't go through to the back and it looks um, really cute. So I was gonna make a super fancy applique, but this is Tuesday Techniques and today is Tuesday. So if I wanna get this um, video up for you guys by tonight, um, I need to get a move on. So you can do any kind of fancy applique. This is just a super, super simple heart applique and I will put the link to it in the description for this video in case you want to do a similar thing. So let's go ahead and get going on that. Notice I've left all the green. Um, and I haven't woven those in. That's because when I, when I do the outside border and single crochet, it's gonna be in dark green and I'm just gonna like pick those up as I go. So I'm gonna just crochet over the top of those and um, weave those in that way. So save myself a little bit of time. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this off. Um, and I think I already, did I already go up one? I did. So the one thing about stopping in the middle of your work is you can't remember what you did. Okay, so I'm gonna chain up one and then I'm gonna go to take two off at a time. So we're here, right? I'm gonna go off this. So casting off on this, I call it casting off because it's a lot like knitting. Um, it's just what you think it would be. It's actually probably what you had kind of accidentally done at the beginning anyway. So we're gonna keep on whatever stitch you're doing on here, keep doing it for your last stitch and you're gonna cast off as you go. So if you were doing the knit stitch, or if you were doing the base or the simple stitch, um, just keep doing that stitch, but we're just gonna do the stitch and then cast it off. So we're, I'm gonna come in from the back because we're doing the reverse. Bring my yarn up, pull it up like that, and then go straight through that. And you're gonna do that all the way across to finish it. And it makes for this nice edge which matches that edge. So there, and it looks just like the top of a single crochet. Makes it very easy for when we do our border around the outside too. That one's a little loose, so I'm gonna go back and tighten it up because I like that I crochet loosely, for regular crochet, because it kind of keeps things nice and soft, but it doesn't really work very well on Tunisian. Those of you who crochet tightly will probably appreciate that you do that when you're doing Tunisian crochet. You won't have the loose edges that I have on the right side. So here's the end. Keep Make sure you do it the same way that you would if you were in the um, regular row. Just pull that chain up and then just pull it right off like that. And you have completed the top of that. So it's nice and finished on there. So now, since I'm going to do my single crochet around the outside in the same color, I'm not gonna break it. I think I am gonna knot it just to make sure that that stays nice and firm. 
Yep, you know what? Let's just keep going with this hook that way. I don't have to go find the right one. So I'm just gonna do a single crochet here, but because it's on the corner and I want it to be nice, when I come back over here, Okay, so right now I'm just gonna do a single crochet and I'm just gonna continue onward. But first thing I'm gonna do before I do that is I'm actually gonna chain up one. And the reason why is because when we do the corners, we want each corner to have a single crochet chain and a single crochet, and that's what's gonna keep that corner nice and cornery. <laughs> nice word, I <laughs> keep it um, mitered, I guess, is the right word for that, but um, pointy. A nice pointy um, side there, by pointy corner. So. I'm just gonna single crochet around the outside um, with the right side facing me. Do you ever look back at your work from like two years ago and try to figure out what your choices were? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do right now. So if it feels like it's starting to get too buckly, like it's getting like it's um, like there's more going on here than what's going on here, just do a decrease stitch. So pull up one loop pull up another loop, and then do your single crochet. And that way it will keep it from getting um, too much on the sides, but you won't see any missing stitches. This is where we're at so far. I did one row. Here is the um, corner. I just wanted to show you the corner really quickly. I, uh, when you get to the corner, find the chain part, which is this little loop right here. Hopefully you can see that. See that loop right there? That's the chain. Take those two pieces right there. You're gonna go in that, do your single crochet, chain one, single crochet back in the same stitch. And that keeps your corner nice and pointy, like that, cornery. <laughs> and then continue on across there, grabbing both of those stitches on the bottom. Okay, here we go. I finished the edging and check it out. Remember all those loose stitches on the right hand side? What loose stitches on the right hand side? They're all covered up now. Yay, Shh, don't tell anybody. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, what I wanna show you really quickly is um, one thing I do, I must have missed that one. So one thing I do when I go over the top of my um, tails is I don't weave them all the way in. I just weave them in like four or five stitches and then I take them back on themselves because that's what keeps them from undoing themselves later. Here comes my doggy. It's like everybody's gotten used to like wait, coming down the stairs and waiting to see if I'm talking to find out if I'm filming. And I think the dog is doing the same thing. <laughs> he comes down to the bottom of the stairs and he's like, is it okay for me to come through? We're gonna skip over this bar right here and then we're gonna go back the way we came. And that's what keeps it from working itself out, especially on a dishcloth where you use it a lot. Um, it's kind of important. Otherwise you just have little, end, little ends hanging out all the time. So I'm gonna do that with all of the green ones. Um, but I'll do that off camera so you don't have to look at it. I wanna show you how to do this white one here. So the white one, basically the, the back of this is a lot like a, a knitted back, but it's not exactly the same. It's very thick. This right here looks like um, knitting, but this doesn't. So we're gonna do a similar thing to working in your ends in knitting, but for me, I'm kind of winging it as I go, to be honest. So one thing I do, you do actually want to follow these bumps a little bit, and then that actually kind of shows you where that little horseshoe is. But I just kind of work in this way through the back loops. Just make sure you don't go through anything that is on the front, right? and then find that other loop that goes back up. See this loop right here? I just follow that and go back through the stitches that you were just in. What it ends, don't do it too tight, otherwise you're gonna pull it tight like that. So I just do it a couple of times. And then just like when I weave in my ends in regular crochet, I jump over something jump over 
a thread so it doesn't undo itself and then go back the way I came. Let me jump over that one. And that just keeps it from like going back and forth and working its way out. But spreading it across like two or three rows like that keeps it from being too bulky because this is bulky already. You don't want to add a lot of extra bulk to it. So once again, this is probably not the right way to do this, but it doesn't show on the front. It's pretty invisible on the back. Excuse me as I put that back in there and it's not going to come undone. Those are my objectives. If I've completed those objectives, then I have accomplished what I set out to accomplish. So um, if you have a better way to do that, go ahead and tell me, leave it in the comments. Everybody can benefit from your knowledge. So um, you can leave it in the comments or you can come join us on our Facebook group and share it there if you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave in all those green ends. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this little heart. I'm gonna show you how to do applique and how easy it is on top of a simple stitch. And then we'll be done. Okay, I'm ready to put this cute little applique on. Um, all I did was I found the center and I pinned it down so it's not going to like slide around on me very much while I'm um, sewing. And then I just made a little knot. I tied it to that first bar and then I just made a little knot. Don't worry about this. We will figure we will work that out later. And then I'm just going to go around it and I'm going to find whatever the bar is that's underneath it, kind of hidden, not like out here to the side and um, want to grab the one that's kind of close to underneath it and then go through the back loop don't even touch those top stitches at all and then it'll just be magically attached Okay, so just in case I didn't do a really good job of showing you on the other, I'm on a better angle now. <laughs> so I'll show this a little bit closer. So basically I'm going through whatever bar is closest and then I'm gonna grab, you can either go through these two or these two, whatever is easiest for you. And this is behind the applique, so no one's gonna see anyway. Just like that, grab the next bar. And the next stitch is there. There you go. And then you just want to knot it. Make sure it's on there pretty straight. It's pretty straight. It's not perfect, but um, and then you just want to like Go ahead and knot that with the original one that you did. All I do to weave in my ends. You can, and you can totally take the time to weave your ends in the normal way if you want to, around like maybe the outside of this. But I actually just take it through the middle <laughs> between the two pieces. Just like that. So I'm basically going between the applique and the cloth so that it's just kind of in that space in between. Like that. Like it never happened. And there you go. All done. Okay, so that was a lot of playing today that we did with Tunisian crochet. So we're going to just kind of to recap what we did was we started with a reverse simple stitch. Then we did a simple stitch and I taught you how to change colors, working with two colors at a time. Reverse simple stitch, knit stitch, and I was changing colors from the side. So you were getting not doing two colors at a time, just one color at a time. And then back to reverse stitch, back to knit stitch reverse stitch and then we did um, a single crochet around the outside to just kind of give it a border 
And then we just put a little heart applique on the front. The question now is, is this a Christmas crochet cloth or is it a Valentine's crochet cloth? <laughs> to be honest, in my house, it'll probably be both because I tend to leave my Christmas decorations up all winter. <laughs> so if um, this is something that you loved doing and you want to learn more, please tell me in the comments. Um, I fit a lot into one video because I wanted to give you the tools to kind of run with it. But there are lots and lots of stitches out there that we can learn together. Um, there's lots of different things we can make with Tunisian crochet. Um, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't personally explored that that much. Everything I've done has been um, flat or um, rectangular or square but you can actually make your heart in Tunisian crochet you can I can show you how to you know decrease and increase stitches and make shapes and there's lots of it's a whole world so um, if that's something that interests you please leave it in the comments um, or you can join us on our Facebook page my Facebook group is called Janelle's quarantine crochet and you can join us there and you can share pictures of what you've accomplished and um, ask for help and tell us um, what else you wanna learn. Cause most of my videos, to be honest, come from, they're inspired by what my group wants me to make. So um, if there's something you really want me to make, come join our group. So I hope you like that. Um, I'll see you on the next video, bye.